Uh, well, we don't have a Matt Ippolito. And so, but we do have a got question segment for you this weekend. So, uh, myself, I am uh, Kevin Hospice. I'm the student ministries pastor here at BBG. We've got Garrett Cook with us. He is uh, the communications guru for BBG, as well as part of our student ministries team and Mr. Randy Swantez up there, uh, Mr. Got Questions himself, and part of the leadership for Zulon Ministries, as well as our series uh, campus for BBG. So, we have a timeless, age-old student ministries question. It's probably the question that I'm asked more than any other question, um, and it is the question that is simply put, I'm new to the Bible, where do I begin? and why so this one's fun i can't wait to see what you guys have to say so i'm gonna just, i'm gonna allow y'all to start this week i'm actually gonna be the third person that responds so this is big for me this is big for me so go ahead guys <laughs> well randy so so I think it's funny because Gary and I were talking yesterday uh, at Zulon and mentioned the, the question. And I told, I told Garrett, you got to start in the beginning. So uh, there's two places to start in the beginning. Start in John 1.1. 1, 1. In the beginning was the word and the word was God and the word was with God. Or start in the beginning in Genesis. Um, in the beginning was, the, was uh, in the beginning God created. Um, but in all seriousness, I, I don't know that I would start with John, but I would definitely start in the Gospels because there's a reason that whoever uh, asks you this question, generally speaking, there's a reason they're asking it. And I, I like the idea of starting with the Gospels, not necessarily John, because I don't know that John is as accessible uh, initially to a new Christian, but I would say Matthew, Mark, and Luke, uh, pretty accessible. And then for me, the way I think is understanding the history and, and we kind of understand stories. And as Matt always says, I'm not talking about stories once upon a time. This is the real thing. Um, it's a real um, history of what happened when God created uh, the world. So what I would prefer to do is start, start with one of the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, or Luke. And then I would go to Genesis and Exodus because I think those are really accessible to people. They tell the story of, you know, the beginning of the world, go through the flood. They go through uh, Joseph and the fathers of Judaism and then uh, getting the Israelites out of, out of uh, Egypt. And then I started thinking because I started thinking, okay, where would I go from there? And if I'm Matt, I go to Samuel because I got to pick up some, <laughs> some David stories. But, no, that's, uh, oh, that's fun. <laughs> but the, the non-story related stuff that I would go to, honestly, is I think about wisdom. And I think, where would I go to get wisdom? And for me, Proverbs is the way to go. So I, if it were me and I was telling somebody how I would go, I would say start with one of the three, as I think they're called synoptic gospels. And Correct. then I would go to uh, Genesis and Exodus, and then I would uh, head over to Proverbs. That would be where I would, that would, that would be my thought process, and that's why it would be my thought process. Cool. Garrett, yeah. on to you. All right. Kevin, are we wearing the same shirt, by the way? No, nah, man. Unless you are a big fan of this particular band. Oh, no. I thought uh, I was a shirt. Sorry. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, this, I mean, haven't we also asked this question before even when i finished reading a book of the bible or something like okay what do i do next is there a right book to read is there a wrong book to read am i and uh so obviously i mean regardless of what book you read it's all inspired word of god so you can mm -hmm. land anywhere from hosea to revelation to psalms to genesis to the gospels to ephesians and god will speak to you um for me it kind of depends on who the kid is obviously this is for middle schoolers to high schoolers so, you know, a senior in high school is going to be different than a sixth grader age-wise, but also spiritually maturity. I mean, a sixth grader could be more spiritually mature than a high schooler. So it kind of depends where the kid is. 
like for example for me when i read through the whole bible for the first time i didn't do that until i was a freshman in college and i had tried multiple times to start mm-hmm. in genesis and go through and like people i got stuck in leviticus and deuteronomy and stopped but it wasn't mm-hmm. until i had kind of a maturity where i understood i think more of the larger picture and just a prompting by the spirit that just sustained me and got me all the way through so i would agree with randy i mean if a kid it depends who the kid is if the kid doesn't know anything about jesus and they they literally just got handed the bible and they're like i don't even know what this is why are there all these different chapters and books for that kid yeah i would say start in matthew mark luke or john because I mean, that's the climax, really, kind of, of the Bible. I mean, that's where Christ comes. It shows his life. It shows his death. It shows his resurrection. From there, I would go to, like, Ephesians, probably. Um, but, but for if a kid listening right now is that kid where you just have no knowledge, I would also encourage you, talk to one of your leaders at Youth Group or talk to one of us so we can explain to you the full picture of the Bible. I think, I think what can get confusing for kids that just for the first time pick up the Bible is they don't understand kind of the whole story. So it's confusing because they're jumping in like halfway or a quarter of the way or two thirds of the way. And they're like, wait a second. Like even when you read through some of the Old Testament books, they repeat some of the same. So there's just some things that are just confusing. I mean, mm-hmm. it's, I think it's important if you're a kid out there and you're like, okay, hey, I started Matthew and I just don't understand how this fits and what's going on. It starts with this genealogy. Like, do I read that? Am I supposed to understand that? Am I supposed to get what 120 of these people, who they are, you know, I mean, how are you supposed to know? Just ask. I mean, that's why we're here. We can explain kind of where it fits in the story. Now, for the kid that's been around the church for 10 years and has heard 300 sermons and has, has thought, has read through different verses, maybe not spent some time in books, that may be a little different. Maybe I would guide that kid more to, to thinking about reading through some of the first books of the Old Testament. Um, like you said, Randy, maybe heading to the, to the Proverbs and to the Psalms. I would always encourage if a kid is spiritually mature enough. Now, that depends on where, where they are at and, and kind of their walk with Christ. I would always encourage to read through the whole Bible. I mean, there's no question about that. But if the kid's not to that place, yeah, that's okay. I would say start in the Gospels, um, just like Randy. Then I would go to Ephesians. Um, that's just a place that in college, we would always point kids or students to, um, and then, and then go from there. So that's my short answer. So awesome. My guess is Kevin uh, is going to say, start right in revelation. Yeah. Where you had to We're back. <laughs> Dude, no, no, you're no. <laughs> um, <laughs> whew. um, so for me, um, I agree and, and have a differing opinion at the same time. Um, I, I definitely agree that you start in the Gospels. Um, but I think, uh, for me anyways, the one that paints the fullest picture in my, in my thinking of the Gospel, why you need it and how it's presented and accessible to you is the book of John. Um, when a kid asks me, hey, if I'm going to read one book of the Bible, what book is it? My answer is always John, and I don't hesitate um, on that answer. But for the kid who likes to read and really wants a firm grasp of the Christian faith, um, I always encourage them to read a triple pack of books that all exist in order, and that's John, Acts, and Romans. And so with those three books— you have the story of Jesus, his redemptive work on the cross, the beginning of the church, and the advancement of the church. And then you've got this, this theological megatron of, of Romans, which as they now have an understanding of who Jesus is and what he accomplished and the church that's founded on him, then all of a sudden you get to Romans and you're like, whoa, you know, the top gets blown off with all these theological nuances and different things going on um it is a lot to take in but for the kid that may be on that more you know kind of mature level of their faith but they've never actually picked up the book um that's my biggest challenge to them is to go through those three in the order that they're presented um for the kid 
who wants a mix match, who wants the New Testament, Old Testament, I challenge them to read, like Randy said, John and Genesis, um, because those are the beginnings. Um, you know, you see the phrase in the beginning with the beginnings of both of those books. Um, I think the thing that when it, when it comes to trying to read through the whole Bible, and I, I love that challenge, I think that it's something that we should continue to extend to our students and to ourselves, the things that the thing that students tend to get caught up on in reading through the whole Bible is the layout of the Bible. They don't understand that it's not chronological. Yeah. And I know that when once I learned that it's broken up into chunks, it was very uh, much. It was just easier for me to kind of understand and, and see where things were kind of laid over. Um, right. And it kind of made it come to life more for me when I realized that the first 17 books of the Bible, you know, Genesis through Esther, that's your history of the Israelite people. That's, that's the history recorded. And the next five, those are poetical books. So they should be read as poetical books. Not that there's not truth in the poetry, but that, you know, when you're, when you're looking at them, there's there's a bit of whimsical you know play on words as you're reading through the psalms um and there's raw gut emotions as you're reading through the psalms um and uh and then the next 17 you got the prophets you know and those prophets are interlaced between essentially the samuels all the way to esther and that's where they exist and so that was super helpful for me to realize that those last 17 books of the Old Testament all exist within the timeline of the first 17 books of the Old Testament. And so then you got uh, you know, your New Testament broken down the same way, that all of the Pauline epistles exist within uh, the, the Book of Acts timeline as well as the general epistles, you know. Um, and so th that whole breakdown of the Bible made it kind of yeah. just – resonate so much more with me as I read through it, realizing that, oh, it's not a chapter book. Like it's, it's inspired writing and these writings are categorized, but they're all interlaced on the timeline. So anyways, that's my two cents on that one. I, I How about this question, guys? We're going to do it. Oh, you got something, Randy? Yeah, I was just going to say, um, I, I love what you're saying about the, the, the structure and the makeup of the Bible. Uh, we have in in our small group we've had discussions um, because there is a different feel to the Old Testament versus the New Testament, and and I hear people uh, a lot saying, "Oh, that's the Old Testament God, and this is the New Testament God." And and one of the things I just wanted to mention is God is the same and always has been the same. We have changed, but God has not changed, nor will He. And Jesus mm -hmm. was there at the beginning. So it's not, don't be misinformed and think Jesus showed up in Matthew. Jesus That's was right. there in Genesis as well. And it, but it does, to be fair, the reading does feel different. And, and when Jesus um, fulfilled the covenant, history changed and the writing changed. And I think that's just mm -hmm. important to really know. So anyway, yeah, yeah. that just popped into my head. But you had another question. Uh, yeah. Oh, go ahead, Gary. Real, real quick. <laughs> Before we – are you jumping into a related question or is this – Yeah. Okay, yeah, no, go it's ahead. related. Go ahead. It's Because it, it's, it's usually the follow-up question that the student gives me after the, hey, where should I start? Um, and it's personal to each and every one of us. But then they, they usually always ask, well, what's your favorite book of the Bible? <laughs> At least, at least when kids ask me, hey, where should I start? Then they go, oh, okay, that's where you say I should start. W which one's your favorite? As if, like, all of a sudden, you know, my opinion of my favorite book of the Bible is going to, you know, lead them to go to that particular one. Instead of, hey, this is where you should start for your own maturation of faith. But uh, what do you think? You want to throw that around? Sure. Yeah, I was just going to just real quick, I was just going to throw out a few more tips for kids that maybe are just starting. One thing that's always smart or helpful for me, and I'm sure for you guys, is get someone else to read the same book you're doing, like with you, um, and, and talk about it. Because there are things, like I remember I used I met up with this guy in college who just came to know Christ. He was going through John, 
the guy was so confused by the first chapter of John. And for me, I, I had been a Christian for a long time. I didn't realize he was going to be so confused. And so, but thank yeah. the Lord, we started going through it together and he started pulling stuff out. I was like, man, I'm glad we're meeting up and like that you didn't just do this by yourself because mm -hmm. there's things, I mean, he didn't know what son of man was, you know, any of that stuff, Matt, but how would he? Sure. He just met Jesus. And so that's always helpful. Um, go through with a leader or check up with a leader every week or another student, tell them what you've been reading. The other thing is nowadays, there's just so many resources out there. Um, like I think about got questions, not what we're doing, but I think it's got questions.com and dot org. Um, Gospel Coalition, Desiring God, Blue Letter Bible, all of these are like so helpful. And I think it's easy. It's kind of weird. Like other stuff in life, we're so fast to be like, oh, let me Google it. But then when the Bible sometimes we read something, yeah. that just doesn't make any sense. It's like, dude, people have been talking about this for thousands of years, glean wisdom. Now you got to be careful where you're taking it from off Google, obviously. But um, there's some really, really awesome. I love Blue Letter Bible. That's always super helpful oh, for yeah. me because it's so simple and it breaks things down. So if you're a kid out there and you're reading Matthew 7, you know, 10 or whatever, and you're like, what in the world? I did not understand how this fits in. Just go check out Blue Letter Bible. Check out Desiring God. Check out those websites. If you need more, let us know. Okay, my favorite book of the Bible. I don't know if I have a favorite book of the Bible. It's kind of weird. So come back to me, actually. I, I want to think about that. <laughs> All right, Randy. All right, I'm having some lagging issues, so hopefully this won't be too bad. But I do have a favorite book of the Bible, and it really came from a Bible study we did as a small group, and it just was going through verse by verse. And I'm a guy who likes plot. So I'm a fan of Genesis and Exodus. I like there to be action. I like there to be, you know, this person did this. I am not good at the real, um, the deep, the Pauline epistles. I struggle with it. I really struggled in Daniel for the second half of Daniel. But this Bible study was uh, James. And James was fantastic. I mm -hmm. really, really got a lot out of it because we slowed down, slowed way down. We read the passages very carefully. And there is a ton of really deep wisdom and instruction in James. So I'm a big fan of James. Kevin, what do you think? Uh, yeah, so my favorite book of the Bible is John. Um, but I, I agree, James is, is fantastic, especially as you understand who James is uh, in connection with Jesus and how James starts his letter. Um, and I do love the practical application of James, being that it's essentially like a, a book of marching orders for the Christian faith. And so I do like that aspect as well. Um, but there's little nuggets throughout the Bible that I enjoy. There's obscure books of the Bible that I enjoy. One of my favorite books is Haggai, uh, which a lot of people are like, uh, bless you. Um, but uh, it is, it's a book that I like. I even have favorite chapters when I'm really honest. Ephesians chapter 4 is my favorite chapter of the Bible. Close second is Luke 15. Um, but uh, yeah, if I'm going to pick an overall favorite book, uh, it's John. That's, that's, my, that's mm. my book. I don't know. It's hard. I mean, it's hard to because they're all so different. So it's like hard to. I definitely like Matthew. I love love reading Matthew. I love Philippians. Mm, yeah. Philippians. I got quite a bit of time in. I love Philippians, but I don't know. That's I have to think about that. I don't know if I have a favorite favorite book. Will you get back to us on that one, Garrett? We'll pray for you. <laughs> Thanks, man. <laughs> well, anything else, guys? I would say I'm good. I would say just be encouraged. If you're a kid that's just picked up the Bible and you're starting, just be encouraged. It's, this is all a journey. Like there's, there's things that you'll read. It's okay if you don't fully understand it. It's okay. That doesn't mean you're not a Christian. That doesn't mean you don't love Jesus. It doesn't mean he doesn't love you. It's okay. Just keep pushing through. Keep persisting. Talk to your leaders. Know that all of us have been in the place where we've read verses and not understood what it's saying. And that's okay. Yes. That is totally okay. And uh, the problem is when we never talk about it, we think we're the only ones. And I'm telling you, you're not. I still read verses and I'm like, I do not know what this is saying. And just so just be encouraged in your desire to spend time in the word of God. God sees and, and he wants to speak to you. And so, so be encouraged that um, even if you don't fully understand the verse, just that moment spending with Jesus in his word is precious. So I would, uh, I'll piggyback that um, with this thought. Just because you read a book once, a book of the Bible once, doesn't mean you're done. Um, I've, I've read 
the Bible a lot in my life, and I am continually amazed at how when I pick it back up and I read through a chapter that I've read through, I don't even know how many times, the different takeaways that I get as the Holy Spirit does what the Holy Spirit's going to do, and that's illuminate passages for you um, as you read. And so just because you've read through Genesis once doesn't mean, now I've checked that one off, I'm done. No, you keep picking it back up, keep reading, keep digging, because odds are as you open up the book, the Lord is going to have something for you for that day in wherever you're reading in Scripture. And what he has for you that day will be something different the next time that you read it. I can almost guarantee that. Or he'll give you an amazing reminder of the first time that you read through that or the second time that you read through that or the third time, whatever it may be. So just because you read through a book, it's not check off the box thing and then, man, okay, I read through all 66. Now this thing can just sit on the shelf. I don't know. Just keep picking that up. Keep, keep going. So yeah. it's good. Yeah. Well, all right, my friends, and that's it. And so right. thank you guys for tuning in to Got Questions. If you have questions, you can submit them right below this video. Just click on the button, submit your question. We'd love to answer anything that you got. And so we hope you're having a great weekend, and we'll see you next week. Bye for now. Bye. All righty.